Hey everyone, Carrie Beck here with Homeschool Coffee Break, where we help you stop the overwhelm so you can take a coffee break. Hey, I'm excited to be here. This month is one of my favorite topics because we're talking about leadership education. And if you follow me for any time, you know that I am all about raising leaders, not followers. That is what my our flagship course. And so today we're going to be talking about how do you, growing lifetime learners who eventually become leaders. How do we grow our kids to love learning, to be lifetime learners who eventually go off to be leaders? And what's the connection between all of that? And so we're going to talk about that. But before we do, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please go find that little button for the subscribe button and subscribe so we can get this out to more people and be able to have an impact on those around us so that we can raise our kids to be Christian leaders. And I would love it if you would just share this podcast with one other person that you think that would be, uh, this would be helpful to. That would mean the world to me. All right, let's dive in and talk about growing our kids to be lifetime learners. That means for life, not just stopping at high school, and then so that they become leaders. So um, what is a lifetime learner? Let's talk about this for a few minutes. I believe a lifetime learner is one that continues to learn after graduation. I was always someone who enjoyed school. Y'all may go, eh? I did enjoy it, but I also, I am always learning. I've always enjoyed learning. I didn't always like to read, to be perfectly honest. And uh, when the kids were little, I would read in bed and fall asleep. The book would be like here on me. And so I was like, what is wrong with me? And then I fell in love with reading. And I'm going to tell you, my kids know it. Um, I did enjoy books. I, I poured books into my kids. I mean, we read aloud all the time. And so that I, that really did start probably more with my kids. I love to read now. And they will tell you that. There's a story. I've probably shared this and you probably heard it. But we were in Idaho and Hunter was going to visit at a friend's house for the first time. And he walked, you had to walk through the dad's office, which was octagonal floor to ceiling bookshelves everywhere except in the doorways and the windows a desk full of books a couch and a coffee table full of books books on the floor books everywhere he walks and he goes my mom would love this room and they're like okay steve and i come to pick him up and we have to walk through this room and i walk in i go oh i love this room and everyone breaks out in laughter i'm like what is so funny about loving this room and they say well that's exactly what Hunter said when he came in here. Did I tell Hunter? Okay, Hunter, I want you to always like to read. I, I like to read, so I want you to like to read as well. He saw me. I modeled my love of learning. I modeled my love of reading. What do you model for your kids? We are all modeling something, all right? And so I think that is super important. What is a love of learning? What is a lifetime learner? It is someone who is curious about what's going on. They are inquisitive. They do love to learn. They know how to learn. That Someone has prepared them and given them the tools to be able to read and understand and learn. And not all learning is through reading. Lots of hands-on learning. Some people are auditory learners. So we do have different ways of learning. But I would say a lot of our learning does come from books, whether we read it or whether we listen to it on audio. Um, and so I think it's really important. That's one of the things we definitely cover in Raising Leaders, Not Followers. We have two weeks. We have a, a whole week on just how do we inspire kids to enjoy learning when they have such bad attitudes? How, what tools of learning? What are the tools that we need to give our kids so that they can become lifetime learners? And so... Um, that to me is the basis of a lifetime learner. And you may be going, okay, well, that sounds good. I'm on board, but how do we do this practically? What are some ways that mom, you could actually grow lifetime learners in your homeschool? Well, here are a few ideas. Number one, I, I've already said this, it starts with you. It starts with you. We need to model learning. We need to model our love of learning. And if all you do is tell them to go do something and then you start scrolling on your phone, they're like, wow, mom, did, she just scrolls on her. Phone. What is most important to her? It's that phone. I've sort of gotten away from the phone whenever I'm working now. I've been trying to keep it in another room. That's why it's not sitting here. Otherwise, I would remember to bring it as a prop. You are modeling something. You need to start 
with you reading and learning and sharing with your kids what you're learning. If you read a book, tell them about the book that you're reading. It can You can even start reading a kid's book. I read um, Anna Green Gables a couple of years ago, and I've read it before, but I learned new things from it. It was really exciting, I think. Um, the other thing is, I think you need to give your kids the tools of learning, and you need to flip the switch in your head. Instead of taking their paper that they've written or their whatever they've turned in and turning it red like it you bled on it or something with all your corrections, I would take a step back and instead of finding their mistakes, find the things they did right. And just for a while, point out always first, you need to always find one thing that they did right. It may just be that they wrote their letters on the line and used a period and a capital. I don't know. It, it may be really simple. You've got to start praising them for the good things, the ways that they are learning. Because those negative and when you're always correcting them, they are going to get sort of depressed. They're not going to, they're like, I don't know, okay, I'm just doing this because mom tells me to. Find ways to encourage them in what they're learning. All right. Yes, we do need to correct their mistakes. But let's say we're writing a paper and they're in eight years old, 10 years old. They do not have the language skills that you as a 38 year old, you've got 30 years of experience on them. Don't expect them to write a paper as eight or 10 year old as you would. They may make some clumsy mistakes, but find things that they did well. And then correct maybe just one thing that you've already told them. You're like, okay, I'm going to be, this is what we're working on. And maybe it's using an adverb or an L-Y word or whatever. Make sure you use one in every paragraph. And praise them when they do, even if it's not perfectly used. So you've got to flip the switch and start praising them. And, and not false praise, not just saying it because you need to. You want to say it because they're actually doing well at that. It's the same with character building. We need to praise them academically and character. Oh, as, as we were talking to, um, I interviewed Kathy Morrissey about character building a few weeks ago. It was great. And we were talking about saying positive things, looking for the good thing. And I had shared, I said, you know, there's a research that I found a few years ago that kids hear over 300 negative words a day and like 17 positive. That is called flip the switch and go and start, quit being so negative. Find the positive things that they are doing as well, academically and in character uh, with their siblings, family, whatever. Okay, so... We've talked about what a lifetime learner is. We've talked about some activities, real simple activities. And flipping the switch is really important. Um, and what's the connection? Okay, we've got lifetime learners. We've talked about that. But we want to grow them into leaders. How do we do that? Let me just say, first of all, leaders are simply influencers. Nothing more, nothing less. John Maxwell, guru of leadership education, says, Leaders are simply ones who influence those around them. And he says they are always growing and learning. Well, if they're always growing and learning, that means they will be lifetime learners. And there is a correlation. I do believe if you are constantly learning, you will end up being a leader. You may lead your family. You may lead your kids. That may be it. Or you may be leader of the HOA in your neighborhood, or you may lead a Sunday school at church or a Juana's group or whatever. I will say this, a leader, generally speaking, has big libraries. They are constantly learning. And so if you are giving your kids the desire to learn more, they will tend to have a bigger library than their TV. Okay, now some people have big TVs and they are leaders and they are learners because TVs are so big. But if all you do is sit on the couch and watch TV all the time and, you know, or play video games, you're probably not learning. All right. And so we need to take a step back and show our kids that um, we want you to lead and give them opportunities. Maybe they learn about something and they teach it to a younger sibling. So we want our kids to be lifetime learners and leaders so that they can influence. So if they are constantly learning, 
they will be better prepared to influence those around them as moms, dads, husbands, wives as well. So does this really even matter? Especially if you've got young kids. Some of you are probably going, my kids are three, four, and five. Why does this matter? Well, I'm going to tell you what. If you have leadership education in your household, it starts with toddlers and goes all the way up. You are at the perfect place to be able to start leadership education. How so? Because the foundation of leadership education, raising our kids to be leaders, is character building. And when's the best time? As early as possible. We want that character foundation built. Now, if your kids are older, you can still deal with that. But I'm talking, a lot of y'all are like, I don't know why that matters. Leaders are more like teenagers. No, we want that foundation when they are toddlers. And if they, we're just working on one thing. We don't care about the critical thinking skills till their little brain starts thinking abstractly. So start with character foundation, then build that love of learning and make learning fun and then give them the tools of learning, then get to critical thinking skills. So really, if you have young kids, you are in the perfect place to get started with leadership education. Um, like I said, well, we do have a flagship course. It just happens to only open up like our major time is in May because we have a summer class coming around. I'd love for you to join us, but I have a free masterclass, Four Steps to Raising Christian Leaders. All right. And that would be something that I think is so important that you could come in. It's completely free and be able to join us wherever you're listening to this. Go ahead and um, and click the link and there'll be a link to the registration form as well. So I think it is so important that we grow our kids beginning at little ages to be leaders. I want to close with a story about my granddaughter, Faith, who um, she's nine now. But when she was about three years old, um, her mom and dad were painting some parts of their house. And so I took her away to this farm that had an Easter egg hunt, but it had chickens and bunnies and horses and train rides and face paint and everything. And I'm going to tell you what, that child was interested. Everything was new. When she first got there, she wasn't so sure about those roosters and chickens. But when she was finished, she was beating them. She was holding the bunny. She had a pony ride for the very first time. Everything was exciting. She was curious and inquisitive about every, every little spot in that whole big farm that we went to. That is a child that loves learning. We want to keep that attitude as they grow up. And too often, what do we do? We strangle it out of them. We give them a stack of books and say, here, this is learning. Don't do that anymore. Encourage your kids by having a godly foundation and a love of learning at a young age. And then as they grow up, they can grow up to love learning and lead well. Um, and Anyway, I just think you're at a perfect age as well. If you have older kids, you can still give them the love of learning. You may just have to notch it down a little bit and maybe take some time off and just have fun learning together as well. Hey, thanks for spending time with me. I am Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break. We'll talk to you next time.